Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to be talking about the magnetic force equation and also how to find the direction. So before you watch this video, make sure you already know how to do the right hand rule. I already made a video for that, it was my last video. So go ahead and watch that if you haven't already. Because we're going to need to know how to do it in order to understand this video. So first let's go to the equation of magnetic force. Magnetic force is equal to QVB sine theta, where Q is going to be our charge, V is going to be the velocity of that charge, and B is the value of our magnetic field. And then sine theta, the theta is really the angle between our velocity and magnetic field. Most of the time that's going to be 90 degrees, almost always. So almost always you can ignore the sine theta in this equation and you just have QVB. And by the way, I do put absolute value signs around this Q because I don't care if it's a positive or a negative charge. The only thing the positive or the negative charge would tell me in this equation is the direction of the force, which we don't use direction using the equation. We find direction using right hand rule. So let's make a note of that. Find direction using right hand rule. I'm abbreviating it RHR. And if you forget how to use right hand rule, RHR, just a quick refresher, your thumb is going to point in the direction of your velocity, your index finger is going to point in the direction of your magnetic field, and then you half extend your middle finger, only halfway, and that's going to be the direction of our magnetic force. And it's going to look like this, for instance, thumb up, index finger that way, half extend middle finger that way. And you can obviously reposition this in any orientation you want, depending on what charges you have in this problem. Now, one more thing I want to say from a conceptual standpoint before we look at these problems. Magnetic force makes absolutely no sense in real life. Here's the analogy I would use. You're walking down the street north, you feel a gust of wind coming from the west, and all of a sudden, you start floating upwards. It makes absolutely no sense from a real life perspective because at least wind doesn't work like that. Magnetic fields always point perpendicular from their direction. And by the way, to make that analogy even weirder, as soon as you stop walking, the force goes away, which is very strange. So I guess what I'm trying to say is a better explanation of what's going on here is just magic. So everything that I'm talking about is because magic. But luckily this magic has an equation Magnetic force equals absolute value of Q, V, B, sine theta. And I'm going to be ignoring the sine theta for most of the problems today. So for our first problem, let's say I have a positive charge, a positive 3 Coulomb charge, and it's heading to the right with a speed of 10,000 meters per second. It's heading pretty quick. And we're about to head towards a region where we have a magnetic field pointing out of the page like this. So imagine this positive charge here is now entering the magnetic field. Before it enters, it doesn't feel any force. As soon as it enters the magnetic field, now it starts feeling a force. So if we want to calculate the force, oh, I forgot to give the magnetic field. Let's say the magnetic field B is just equal to 100 Tesla, which by the way, those units are not named after Tesla, the car company, or Elon Musk. They are named after the world famous physicist Nikolai Tesla, probably one of the greatest physicists of all time. And most people don't know about him, which is really a shame. So if we want to calculate the force, the force simply equals Q, which is three times the velocity, 10,000 times the magnetic field, 100. And again, I'm not even going to worry about the sine theta. The reason why is because the velocity and the magnetic field point perpendicular from each other. They're 90 degrees apart, which will happen almost every single time. As a matter of fact, the only time that you should be worried about sine theta, aside from them literally giving you a, an angle and then obviously you use sine theta, the only time you should worry about that is when velocity and magnetic field point in the same direction, then the force is automatically zero. But unless you have that case, we don't have to worry about the sine theta and I'm certainly not going to right now. So we just multiply these all together and you'll get a final force of three million newtons, which is pretty high. But now what about the direction? Direction is equally an important question, not just the force. So if we want to find the direction, we got to go back to our right hand rule. 
which if we remember, thumb points in the direction of velocity, so to the right. Index finger points in the direction of our magnetic field, which is out of the page or towards us. And then you half extend your middle finger. I know you can't see it here, but my middle finger is pointing down right now. And because of that, the force is going to point downward. Or if you'd like to use X hat and Y hat notation, we would say negative Y hat. I'm okay with either way you say it. Now, here's the thing. I just want to say something real quick. This force that the positive charge feels, it's not going to go straight down like that. Like the, the positive charge isn't going to start moving straight down right away. It's going to be more gradual. It's going to start moving like that. And then eventually it will be pointing straight down. And then it's going to be heading straight down forever. Wrong. It will not be going straight down forever. Why not? Because now we got to do our right hand rule again because our velocity changed. Our velocity now points down. Magnetic field points out of the page, so towards me. And then half extend your middle finger. Now the force is pointing to the right at this position. Which, as I said before, it's not going to go straight right. It's going to make a gradual turn to the right and now it's heading that way and as you can imagine you can keep doing that but you really should stop right here and the reason why is because it's just going to keep going to the left because now you just exited the magnetic field region right here so inside the magnetic field it's moving in a semicircle once it leaves it it's now just moving back in a straight line and the cool thing is too that you can actually find the radius of this semicircle right here by using another concept of physics that we used back in physics one and that concept is centripetal force so if we remember the equation for centripetal force centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r and what we can now do is since these forces are equal to each other the centripetal force equals the magnetic force then i can say mv squared over r equals q v b and again just ignore the sine theta but we got this equation right here and so if i gave you the mass of the particle which let's just say for the sake of argument it's one kilogram doesn't matter it's just a calculator equation anyway then i would get one times velocity ten thousand squared divided by the radius equals the charge three times velocity ten thousand times magnetic field 100. Yes, one of the velocities will cancel out, leaving you with just 10,000 on the left side. Simplifying the left side, you've got 10,000 over R. Simplifying the right side, we're just going to have 300. So that means multiply both sides by R. 10,000 equals 300 R. And divide by 300. And you'll get a final radius of 33.3 meters for this problem. Pretty cool, huh? I'd say so. And now let's just look at one more example. This time, we are going to have a negative charge, which does make a difference. We're going to have this negative charge moving up with a velocity of 350 meters per second. The charge is going to be negative 6 nanocoulombs this time. We'll say the mass is 0 0.02 kilograms. And for this problem, I'm not going to say the charge is entering a magnetic field. I'm going to say it's surrounded by a magnetic field pointing into the page. No matter where this charge goes, it's, it's in this region. And as we can imagine, it is going to be moving in a circle again. The question is, which way will this circle point? Will it be a clockwise circle or a counterclockwise circle? And also, what will that radius of the circle be, just like before? So it depends what question we want to answer first, the direction or the calculation. Let's answer the direction first since it doesn't matter. You can do either one. So uh, in order to answer the direction, you just have to use the right hand rule. Thumb is going to point in the direction of velocity, so straight up. Index finger points into the page because that's the magnetic field. Half extend your middle finger, that points to the left. However, since it's a negative charge, you always need to do the opposite direction so it points to the right, the force points to the right, that means it's gradually moving that way, and that also means that our circle is going to be clockwise. It's going to be a clockwise circle. So that was my first question. It will be a clockwise circle. Now if I want to find the radius of this circle, 
I just used the exact same equation we just used a second ago. mv squared over r equals qvb. Most of the variables we already know. The mass is 0 0.02. The velocity is 350 squared divided by the radius equals the charge, which is negative 6 nano. Absolute value makes it 6 nano, and nano is just 10 to the minus 9th times the velocity, 350, times the magnetic field. I don't think I ever gave a magnetic field. So actually, let's switch up the problem. We solved for radius in the last problem. So this time, I'm going to solve for the magnetic field. And let's say my radius for this problem is 3 centimeters. So that means 3 centimeters. That's going to be my radius right there. 3 centimeters is 0 0.03 meters. You just divide it by 100 to get the radius in meters. And then on the right side, we still have that B, which is what I'm solving for this time. I want to find the magnetic field. So the left equation, 0 0.02 times 350 squared divided by 0 0.03, is 81667, rounds to that. And then the other side of the equation is going to be 2.1 times 10 to the minus 6 and the magnetic field, B. So then I'm just going to divide those two numbers to solve for my magnetic field and I will get a magnetic field of 3.89 times 10 to the 10th power, and the units are Tesla. And there we go, there's the answer for that one. So that was fun, hopefully that made sense and magnetic fields now make sense to you. Just keep on doing practice problems, and I'm sure you'll get it. So thank you all for watching, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye bye.